you go. Good job. Good job. Okay. Entonces, primero, bienvenidos al país y a la clínica también. Ustedes recién llegaron, ¿verdad? Sí, a dos semanas. A dos semanas. Cuénteme, ¿cuándo empezó la tos y los síntomas que tenía? La tos salió después que salimos de, de la hielera. El aire acondicionado estaba demasiado fuerte a ella. Se dañó. Ya. Yeah. Ustedes son de Honduras, ¿verdad? Y entonces salieron solo los dos juntos. Cuénteme un poquito del camino. Usted con un bebé, me imagino que eso no fue, no fue fácil. Fue un poco difícil. Ya no daba la fuerza. Ya. Yeah. ¿Cómo? Voy a echar un Kleenex. Right behind the creative coloring one, there's a Phineas and Ferb one. Yeah. That one. They have an appointment with Dr. Mukiji today at 1 p.m. Hola, de nuevo. ¿Cómo estás, Danny? Every Tuesday yeah. and Wednesday, pediatrician Kim Mukherjee Yo voy a venir de regreso a chequear la vista. and case manager Miguel Alonso form a two-person team. Estoy pensando en, en darle un, un screen de trauma. Seeing so 10 to 12 kids per day at the New Orleans Children's Health Project. Okay. I'm at cinco. All of their patients oh, are immigrants. It essentially formed right after Katrina and initially provided disaster response relief to the community in, in an era when the infrastructure had completely been destroyed. The team at the time noticed uh, an increasing trend in Latino families that were actually very new to the area and had not been a part of the day-to-day uh, -day demographics of the city of New Orleans previous to Katrina. What are you seeing in the new patient population that's showing up? Five years ago, when I first started seeing these kids, I would see one new child, meaning new to the country, new to our practice, once every couple of months. Now, they're every single clinic day. They are increasing in frequency to the extent that we cannot keep up. They don't know where to look for housing. Their parents are unable to, to, to work. And about 65% of our patient population screens positive for food insecurity. Uh, the national average is 17% for children. We are seeing children with chronic and complex medical conditions who are arriving to a state like Louisiana where they have no immediate access to health insurance. Louisiana isn't typically seen as a state with a growing immigrant community. But the recent influx at the border affects neighborhoods beyond California and Texas. Less than 10% of the patients have health insurance, and most can't pay much out of pocket. So their program relies on a partnership between Tulane University, Children's Health Fund, and Crescent Care. It keeps them open two days a week and offering appointments that can go as long as two to three hours to make time for physical, social, and mental health exams. How long is your waiting list? So right now, if a mother called us today and wanted an appointment for her child for just a general well visit, the next available appointment would be the first week of November. So we've been running about a three to four month waiting list, but it also just speaks to the volume of children coming into the community. Every single new patient they've seen in the past year has fled violence in their home countries and has been detained in U.S. immigration facilities. It is frío. Nervios. Nervios. <laughs> Respira. When Bea's family came from Honduras in the spring, Bea started to struggle to breathe. Yo pienso yo que, que lo de ella es problema de asma. No estoy convencida que es asma todavía. Pero más me preocupo que cuando algo muy fuerte nos pasa en la vida, un cambio, un estrés, algo que nos da mucho anxiedad o miedo, puede causar síntomas muy parecidos al asma. ¿Cuántas veces desde llegar ha pasado eso, que me falta el aire? 170 veces. No, es que me canso yo, sí. Desde venía acá, sí. En mañana, a tarde, en la noche, cuando me doy vuelta. En su durada, cuando corro, cuando camino. Bea's family is renting a home in New Orleans as her parents await their next check-in with immigration authorities. An anxiety screening found Bea does have severe anxiety, so the clinic team referred Bea and her little sister to see a therapist. What did the doctor tell you? Aunque ella dijo que posiblemente fue que un trauma o ansiedad puede ser lo que yo tengo, pero yo creo que no. 
Yo pienso que las terapias para una persona que ha pasado traumas, de verdad. You don't think making a long journey away from your home and being kept by immigration authorities for days, sleeping on a floor, you don't think those things are pretty tough things to deal with at your age? Yo lo hallo eh, totalmente normal eso. Porque todo el mundo pasa por eso y no todo el mundo se cansa. There are a lot of families in New Orleans who've been through what Bea's been through. In the past year, the clinic saw a 158% increase in new cases. Buenos días de nuevo. Mi nombre es Miguel. Eh, nosotros eh, pertenecemos a un proyecto que se llama Proyecto de Salud de Niños en New Orleans. They hosted a makeshift community clinic as a way to get around the long wait list. ¿Y el bebé cómo se llama? Patients lean on Miguel, who is himself an immigrant from Cuba. Yo entiendo cada detalle y cada problema o, o solución en, en lo que ellos navegan. Oh, perfecto. So, entonces, mamá, el doctor está chequeando la vista, ya acaba de chequearla. Después va a venir acá, donde le van a chequear la audición. Creo que eso hace más fácil mi trabajo. Porque yo, cuando llegué a mi primera cita con mi hija acá, y yo no entendía inglés y yo no sabía qué hacer, pero yo no puedo imaginar cómo pasa cada una de estas personas chocando constantemente con un sistema que en ocasiones se vuelve cruel. Do you think that things are getting better or that they're getting worse? Muy difícil, más difícil. Las necesidades que vemos hoy y las historias que estamos escuchando hoy no las habíamos escuchado antes. Los papás están muy preocupados por no solo por la salud y quizás nosotros somos la única persona que los estamos escuchando. ¿Y de dónde son ustedes? De Honduras. Okay, los tres niños nacieron allá, ¿verdad? Okay. Are you worried that you're just reaching a fraction of the people who need your help? Always. We always have that fear. These are the same children who were at the border, you know, in recent months. These are the same children we're hearing about on the news. Uh, they've all explained to me how traumatic that was or the trauma they've been through in their home countries. So their their layers of needs are so complex. It's something that we have to to address as a community. 